Hi Switch Up family and happy Easter to all of you. Remember to stick around to the end of this video for those two horrible avoid games. This might well be one of the hugest of all the huge huge sales and it's managed to pull me away briefly from Monster Hunter Rise. Remember we give away a free Nintendo Switch game each and every week on this video as well as one each month on the channel so if you enjoy the content then stick around. All you need to do is leave a nice comment and we'll reply to some of you letting you know if you've won a game. Thanks again for last week's giveaway from Cultured Bucket and he'll be announcing who's won the copy of Among Us and that name will be coming up on the screen right now. What's on sale in this huge Nintendo Switch sale? Well, let's find out. First up then, the crown has to go to Doom Eternal, which I reviewed on the channel. When it launched, it was already in pretty good condition. The fact that it was running so well, sure it wasn't always hitting native re resolution, but the frame rate was, was decent, performance was good, it had gyro controls. But since launch, it's had a few patches as well to make it even better. This is by far the cheapest it's ever been on the Switch, and it rewards, I guess, those people that are able to hold off at launch, and brings it down to a price that's much more reminiscent to what you can get it for on other consoles. A really good game, brilliantly executed on the Nintendo Switch. It's £24.99 and that's half price at the moment. And I believe that goes on until April the 15th and easily one of my top picks for this week. Over the last couple of weeks I've been chatting to the Crisis developers and they informed me that they have patched up completely the game since we reviewed it. One of my issues was a few performance quirks when it came out and I've gone back and had a go and yeah, absolutely, it's massively improved since launch and really is mightily impressive. It's a great game anyway and if you're unfamiliar with it, it's a sandbox first person shooter where your character has a load of abilities like being able to jump really high, smash through walls, throw people really far, there's driving vehicles, you can use mounted gun emplacements and the way you approach the combat is up to you. There's lots of different strategies for each area, hence the sandbox nature. It's quite old now but I think it's aged really nicely and it's perfect having it in hand held. It's £14.84 or your regional equivalent and that sale goes on all the way to April the 22nd. That's a 45% discount. Next up we've got the hugely impressive Streets of Rage 4. I believe this was Glenn's favourite game of last year. You might have to correct me on that one Glenn, but I'm sure it was definitely up there. It's currently at its lowest price ever, that's 35% off, taking it down to £14.59, it's an absolute steal. If you're unfamiliar with Streets of Rage, uh, where have you been? But this one saw the excellent Dot .emu working on a complete overhaul of the way the game looked while maintaining that familiar gameplay. It had four player co-op, everything ran at a silky 60 FPS and it had the impossible task of living up to its namesake and it did it, it did it in spectacular fashion. Despite seemingly simplistic, there's actually a lot of complexity and if you compare for example when I play to when Glenn plays, a good player like Glenn is able to actually get through the game without taking much damage and there's a lot more strategy to it than initially meets the eye. Whereas I, uh, well I just die. After reviewing the horror show that was Balan Wonderworld, I was thinking back to some of my favourites in the genre that actually do things right, and tippity top at the top hat is a hat in time, which is currently 30% off, taking it down to around about 17 quid, which is matching its previous low price, and it's an excellent game. It runs really well on the Nintendo Switch, it's not the prettiest ever, but the core gameplay is so fun. The world design's really clever, there's a lot of verticality, and I guess what I'm trying to say is it's just a whole lot of fun. If you've not played this and you like something like Mario Odyssey then you will most certainly enjoy this. It is an older game but it stood the test of time, it has a load of charm, some great boss fights and other areas to explore and is well worth that £17 asking price. That sale goes on until April the 11th. But 
this is by far the lowest it's ever been. It's a stupid £6.74, which is a 75% discount. If you're unfamiliar with it, you play as Alec Mason as he's looking for his brother on Mars. Things don't go quite to plan, and before long you've joined the Resistance. It's fully open world, there's some decent little side stories here as well, but really it's that destructible environment that is probably the star of the show. Any buildings you can see, you can just plow a vehicle straight through the th front of it, attach satchel charges all around the outside and just demolish the entire structure. Most objectives allow you to overcome them in the most destructive ways possible. And I really enjoyed this. We've got a review of this one on the channel. I think it's an excellent game for six quid. That is a real steal. Be sure to check out that review if you're intrigued. The links are all down in that top comment. I was watching an interview yesterday with Edmund who made the Binding of Isaac series talking about his latest game. I think there's a newer version of the Binding of Isaac that's just released and hopefully we'll see that on the Nintendo Switch. But I guess he was chatting a bit about the inspirations that that's had on the whole genre. He essentially, well he didn't create the roguelite genre but he brought it to a whole new generation of players and then lots of games followed a similar style. You wouldn't have things like Hades if it wasn't for the Binding of Isaac for example and one of the kings of that genre has has to go to enter the gungeon. I wasn't entirely sold on it when I first played it. A bit like Isaac in many ways, but once you've got to grips with the mechanics, you've got a good friend for co-op, it's an astounding game. Now this is £5.49. That sale goes on until April the 11th. When you're talking about the best racing games on Switch, it's easy to just think about things like Grid, which is, you know, incredible. And it's also on sale, so probably worth picking up. But I think Glenn and I would both agree that our favourite is actually Horizon Chase Turbo. This is 66% off at the moment, taking it down to £6.11 or your regional equivalent. And it's classic arcade fun, but there's a beautiful soundtrack here as well. And those high score leaderboards are so compulsive to chase. I think at one point Glenn had all of the high scores across the globe and then other people from Switch Up began to take away our crowns. I say our, it wasn't my crown at all really, it was, it was his, annoyingly. <laughs> it will definitely give you outrun flashbacks, but if I remember correctly it was very similar to a game called Top Gear. Another one that looks simplistic and potentially not as fun as it could be, but it's brilliant and it's difficult to master that boost mechanic and the fuel system whereby you have to keep your car topped up with fuel. Really excellent game. Next up we've got Serious Sam The Collection, which is down 50% to £13.49, which again is its lowest ever price since it launched. I can't remember how long ago it was, not long on the Switch, like a few months, but obviously literal decades when it originally came out. Now this has three of the games I believe, but I don't think it has the fourth. They're first person shooters, they're a whole lot of fun, and they're quite mindless. You're essentially just shooting creatures, often they're running at you before they explode. But that's exactly what the game's all about. It's old school style, and I loved it. It was really nice to re-experience it. It's a decent port as well, they've done some good work here. And if I remember correctly, there's a performance mode as well in the first game, and potentially the second. But the third one was a bit more taxing, so it's just running. <laughs> I think that's its claim to fame. <laughs> it's working on the Switch. These go on until April the 11th. There's a full review pinned in the top comment. My penultimate recommendation for this list, and it's been a bit of a toss up, there's Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, which is 50% off, but actually I think I'm gonna go for Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus, which is also half price, taking it down to 24 pound 99, or your regional equivalent. I'm a big first person shooter fan and I love this game. I thought it was brilliant. I love playing as BJ Blazkowicz. I think the way he's written is, is actually quite clever. There's that line here with the between serious and not comical as such, but 
tongue in cheek, I guess, in the same way as something like Fury with Brad Pitt. There's that open disdain for Nazi Germany, but also there's actually a good amount of nuance in the characters, and the more quiet sections do a lot to pad out the narrative. And I should say flesh out, not pad out, because pad out's a negative, isn't it? It's a great sequel, whichever way you slice it, and I personally would like to see some kind of return for these characters, as the young blood didn't really do it for me, if I'm totally honest. That sale goes on until April the 15th, so you've got a bit of time on this one, but once again, it's the lowest it's ever been in price. We'll finish up then with what I would class as a hidden gem. It's a brilliant game, and it's one that you'll take two looks at, or one look at, and say, no, not interested, that looks awful. It's called Piku Niku and it's 75% off, that takes it to £2.92, an absolute bargain. It's a side scroller, it has platforming elements, there's a few weird quirky mechanics in here that you can employ with your different characters, and it also has co-op for the whole experience. I loved this, I thought it was going to be awful. I took one look at it and thought, oh man, it's going to be one of those painful reviews that you have to trudge your way through. Ballet and Wonderworld has left the chat, but no, surprisingly, everything about it, the music, the audio, the performance, it was great, and it was a really nice, enjoyable, quirky little experience. There were some good boss, ex boss fights in there, I think there were a few boss chases in there if I remember correctly and it's well worth £2.92 that's my hidden gem of the week if you're after something super cheap and just want to take a punt Pikuniku might be for you does that rhyme I don't know okay so that takes us on to the avoids for this week now remember with our avoids they are just my personal opinion on why the game's terrible you might disagree and think it's okay and, and that's up to you that's absolutely fine and first up then we have Contra Rogue Core. That's 75% off, taking it down to £9.99. But unfortunately, when you've got a name like Contra, you better make sure that the core gameplay is really tight, very refined, and that it's just a slick experience. Uh, it, this isn't. It really isn't. It's Look, the game's okay, but I don't know if okay is good enough for Contra. There's also a few clunkier mechanics that just don't feel quite right, and they're, they're not executed very well. If it was like... I don't know, a few quid, then maybe. Or if you're a collector and you just wanted the Contra name in your collection, then okay. But I think there's better things that you can spend a tenner on, in all honesty. And then, at the moment, we've got FIFA 2020 on sale. And as we know, EA hadn't, at this point, bought across the Frostbite engine. So they were literally serving us the same dish every time. It was the same engine. It had a few new player roster updates. But it was an embarrassment compared to the other FIFA games. It didn't have the... I believe there's a, the career mode, isn't there? Like the single player career. It didn't have any of that because that utilised the Frostbite engine. And it was quite literally new money for old rope. And it annoyed a lot of people on Switch. Let's hope now that the engine has been ported across to the Switch and it's shown in Plants vs Zombies that actually it runs quite well. We might see a FIFA 22 running on the full Frostbite engine and it would sell like hotcakes, wouldn't it? If it was decent, it's going to sell very well. I know it sells okay regardless, but I think it's a bit of an insult to Switch players for them to keep giving us the same old regurgitated engine but charging the full premium price. So that's it, rant over. There are a couple of other games I think you might want to consider this month. The 2K games are doing the business at the moment with lowest ever prices on things like the Bioshock Collection, XCOM 2 and the Borderlands games. There's Wizard of Legend which is an incredible title and fair play to it. I slammed Ghost Runner for being, you know, it's, it's the worst version you can get. But for £6.24, uh, I might, yeah, that's that's worth £6.24. So that's it for this week. Do leave your normal comments down below. Happy Easter to all of you. And I do hope you enjoy the channel. A big thanks to our patrons who support us each and every month. And as always, for all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya.